ओम शांति थैंक यू जी ओम शांति वी हैड बिन टॉकिंग ऑफ वृत्तीस समटाइम्स पीपल टॉक ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ आउटलुक एंड एटीट्यूड्स दे से यू कैन नॉट चेंज द इवेंट्स बट यू कैन चेंज योर एटीट्यूड्स मोर ओवर योर बिहेवियर डिपेंड्स अपॉन योर एटीट्यूड्स इफ ए पर्सन बिहेव्स विद अस वेरी रूडली रफली एम पोलाइटली वो इसे योर एटीट्यूड इज नॉट गुड सो दिस वर्ड वृत्ति हैज इंक्लूडेड इन इट ऑल दिस आउटलुक एटीट्यूड इंटेंशन मोटिव मूड ऑल दिस टूगेदर इन वन वृत्ति एज आई सेड अर्लियर man is as is vritti is each one in this world is acting according to his vritti of course we sometimes mention drishti our outlook and attitude but the basic to them all is the vritti so we had mentioned a number of vrittis now some others which were left i will take them up one for example is nischintita vritti where a person does not have anxiety no worry there are some people who are always happy whatever happens wa drama wa wa ba ba wa so they have this kind of a state of mind vritti also determines our state of mind it is drama they enjoy it but they always are happy whatever happens and therefore they don't worry why they don't worry why the reason is they know whatever is happening is the result of our actions our past actions whether we will it or not it will happen it has to come now whether you accept it with a happy mind or you accept it with a sad mind but you have to accept it because they are there you can't remove them it is beyond your control certain things do happen in spite of your best efforts and your wishes to the reverse the hurricane came the storm came in taiwan the earthquake came no one had control over it people had built certain hotels at a very high cost they had multi storied buildings with the modern amenities post modern equipments but all of them fell and block the whole of them together they fell to the ground they had no control so there are many many things which may be wish otherwise but they happen as they happen you have no hold over them there are sisters and brothers who come to the institution they like this knowledge very much and they have lot of love for baba they have great desire to march if march forward on the spiritual path and they also want at the same time 
their their other family members also benefit by this knowledge so may they make all their attempts someone making attempts for the father another one for the mother the mother making efforts for the child that this person also may come close to baba but in spite of their best wishes the person doesn't what can be done so there are many many things which are not to your liking which are against your wishes contrary to your efforts what can you do should you be sad should we make our life miserable because of them should we worry have anxiety no always be happy the first slogan in our life we listen to so many slogans at least one slogan every day at the end of the murli but one main important slogan which we always should have written on our forehead or scribed in our heart is be always happy that is the life of a yogi always happy and baba says nischay wala nischint what is the sign of nischay the faith nischay means the faith what is the sign of faith if i say i have faith in baba's knowledge i have faith in god i have faith in me i have faith in drama and so on but at the same time i worry what will be the result of this what will happen tomorrow what will be my future if one or the other kind of worry i have in my life that in itself is a proof that i don't have faithful so they always write faithfully yours faithfully we should be baba's faithful not half faith or one third faith and three fourth faithless you see no full faith and if we have full faith the sign of it will be that we will have no worry baba will take care of it whatever will be happening will be to the best of our advantage beneficial for us it is the ending phase of the drama we have to repay for what we have been doing so why worry it has to happen it has to happen you can't avoid make your efforts try your best but whatever happens what do you say drama baba so nischay wala nischint you see and baba says nischay atma vijayati one who has faith he is victorious this is another sign of a person who has faith, full faith anyone who has full faith will come out victorious brave only can be victorious not the weak people who have the courage who have the daring what do we mean by it we have to face the storms in life the trials and tribulations they will come so we remain unmoved a yogi remains unmoved in front of them all there are people if a rat enters their house now the rat is passing near the foot that person jumps out of fear oh rat 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 you see they are so afraid of a rat which is ganpati sawari you know <laughs> they are afraid of the small rat what to say of lion and other things you see so if they are afraid even of a small rat what would you say 
That means there is a fear in their mind. An Urdu poet has said, Maut ka ek din muayin hai Maut ka ek din muayin hai Neend phir kyun shab bhar nahi aati He says, death has to come one day. Then why can't you sleep? You see, it has to come anyway. Why can't you sleep without anxiety? Sleep. They say sound sleep. I would say soundless sleep. <laughs> because if you make sound while I sleep, others will be disturbed, you know. So, this is what happens. I don't know why they call sound sleep, you see. It is something wrong, you know, to breathe from the nostrils and to breathe out and in, you see. Nostrils are not made for this, for doing pranayama even during the night, you see. In this polluted atmosphere of Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, Madras, to breathe, you see. So what I was saying was, nischaya wala nischinta. Anyone who has full faith would be without any worry. They say three are the causes of man's disease. Hari, worry, and curry, you see. Hari, if you are always in a hurry, never feel relaxed, you, you rush up in a rat race, so you will have heart attack one day. And there is a problem. Work, work very earnestly, zealously, with efficiency. But it does not mean that you should have always hurry, you see, and worry. They say it is never the work, but the worry that kills a man. Man, we have never heard died of work, but we have heard number of times men die because of worry. And curry, whether it be Sindhi curry, Punjabi curry, Multani curry, you see, whatever curry you eat, if you add so many spices and so many things and make it so tasty but unhealthy, unhygienic, not fit for human consumption, having lost all the vitamins and other nutrients, so that kind of curry. These three are the disease, causes of disease, you see. So, we should never have worry. Nischaya wala nischint. Nischaya wala nischint. Nischaya wala nischint. I have full faith in Baba. I will never worry. Why should I? He is almighty. He is my beloved father. He will take care of me. The, even in Laukik, you know, in our worldly matters, if there is a small child and his father is a big man, a VIP, with a lot of influence, with the resources, monetary and others, so he does not worry. He says, whatever happens, my father will take care of it, you see. In our case, we have absolutely no cause for worry because we are children of Him who is the greatest, the mightiest, the holiest, the kindest, the most merciful, not merciful, most merciful. Or Rahman or Rahim in the Quran they say, God the merciful, He is merciful. We perhaps have not experienced this number of times how merciful he is. We have been sinning, and even then he says, my sweet children. Other people would curse us. They would condemn us. They would say, we taught you a number of times, but you don't listen. And we ourselves confess, may murak kal kami. You see, kripa karo bharta. Murak. If somebody says you are Murak, you are stupid, you know. So I will say, hold your tongue. You have no right to say, I am Murak. But I myself have the right to say, 
आई एम मूरख नॉट ओनली आई एम आई स्टूपेड फेलो एज स्टूपेड एज ए डंकी यू सी वॉट दिस नॉट ओनली मूरख बट खल खल मीन्स विकेट विकेट वन हु एज लॉट ऑफ विशियसनेस क्रुकेडनेस इन द माइंड एंड कामी whose desires are endless who is as sexy as a dog you see go god i am such a fellow so you have to be merciful on me you can save me otherwise i am here up to here in quagmire no one can take me out i am drowned i am drowned you see so he is the merciful one my children beloved ones sweet children my lovely children i love you he says we may be dirty brutes but still he says we love you he loves us can you imagine you see so he is merciful when such a father we have what is the worry why at all we worry you see even a slight trace of worry in our mind shows we have that much of faithlessness in our mind so nishchintata nishchint vritti worry less state of mind which in positive terms means happy state of mind constant happiness not this worldly kind of happiness when a person has high status lot of wealth good building to live in all the other amenities and facilities not that kind of happiness but bliss they say i am as happy as in the seventh heaven seventh heaven they have mentioned a number of heavens in the quran it is mentioned five heavens panch aasman you know but in the bible seven heavens you see five heavens or seven heavens but a yogi is always in heaven you see maybe even in the ninth heaven which they don't have you see higher than that so we are our feet are on earth but our mind is there you see we see baba the highest one so nishchintata vritti then another is sneha vritti sneha vritti never should we be touched by any hatred it's very difficult there are people who provoke you irritate you they work against you they criticize you they talk ill of you to many people they defame he they tell you they tell them that you are a bad man you see they put allegations against you blaspheme you what or whatever they do whatever happens even then you love them you like them baba says the bhaktas the devotees have been saying parmatma thikkar bhitar sab mein hai god is everywhere he is even in the stone in the dust in the rubbish you see everywhere means that in the most nasty thing stenchy thing the worst of things god is there also so what is what does it mean they have been defaming but even then he has been giving them visions of their tutelary head of their ist the god or goddess whom they worship he has been kind even to bhaktas if they have been praying to god to give them something and with great devotion making some sacrifices god even appears unto them and people mistake it you know dhanna bhagat there is a story of dhanna bhagat many bhagats we do not know what kind of bhagat we were in bhakti marg you see but each one of us was a bhagat bhagat means thagat you see 
one who deceives others because outwardly he is a bhagat muh mein ram ram bagal mein churi you see so bhagat that is the shape very big mark on the forehead what are you na bhagat what did dhanna bhagat do he used to worship a statue a, an idol an image of god god according to him you see so called god he worshiped and worshiped for a number of years day and night and did much for it but he could not have a vision of it so he was frustrated he became very angry one day angry at whom angry at god you see he said what do you mean as if god is before him he said what do you mean if today you don't appear i'll see you see so he just went and worshiped that idol god did not appear so he kicked the idol with his leg with his foot he kicked it aata hai ke nahi you see where are you why are you hiding he told god come if you don't come you see like the small baby he tells his father i want motorcycle on my birthday you see and if the father says no you can't drive a motorcycle the traffic in delhi is so dangerous at some place the cow is crossing the road at other place another man is crossing the road people don't keep to right or left they go anywhere be sark you see like a mad elephant they go on the roads my dear son no not no and bike you see later on i get you a car so he kicks the cup the plate the glass the table whatsoever comes before him even the cat and the dog the pets in his house he kicks them also without any fault of the big cat and the dog he kicks why i want this you must get it's my birthday you see so also dhanna bhagat naam name is also dhanna bhagat dhanya maharaj he was very strange you see so he kicked and they say god, god appeared you see the the one whom he worshiped whosoever it was god of his own conception it appeared before him it appeared to him as if he had had a vision of it so even when someone is angry he is the merciful therefore they mistake they think that whom they have been worshiping was real god so it was not god but since this man was very fond of him loved him prayed to him and had observed so many fasts and did so much in order to see him so he appeared in the form in which he wanted not his real form so the mistake they either think that god can appear in any form or they think that the god whom they worship he is the god so that happens so god even loves even those whom who even do not love him, love him who even hate him who are the most hardcore atheists even them he loves he is the father i say i give inheritance he says i give inheritance to all all are my children whom i love so also when we follow him whatever happens who should never never hate the color of our eyes should not change the stance of our looks should not change when a person appears before us we should not have this kind of a thought in our mind he is my enemy my adversary my rival he wants to usurp whatever i have never never a yogi a real yogi a high class yogi has this kind of a thought he loves all so snehe vritti 
always always have sneha vritti the loving attitude the mood of loving the outlook and attitude of love love is the basic quality of the soul of god this is what distinguishes him from all the other souls at no point of time is god without love so also now that we know god we have been able to understand his attributes his epithets we should try our best as i said it is a very very difficult task to bear with those people who are like thorns who prick us all the time to love them is a great task but this is our effort the spiritual effort of a yogi so sne vritti this is another vritti we will take up the other ones later thank you om shanti our intentions our moods our states of mind our outlook our attitudes all of these intertwined into one combined into one and we had already mentioned some of them and now we take another one one is parokar vritti parokar vritti beneficent benevolent attitude that we have concern not only for our own well-being but also for others we are not selfish a charge is levied against indian religions buddhism jainism hinduism they are they are individualistic they mind their own betterment and they do not think of others we want mukti liberation each one for himself or herself they are not concerned with the liberation or salvation of others so they say they are individualistic this is not parokar they don't think of others always to mind the betterment of others to be benevolent toward them generous toward them feel concerned for them do something for them and not for our own selves only because many social scientists have said that man is selfish by nature actually this is wrong man is not selfish by nature as of today our nature is selfish no doubt as other vices have entered into us so also selfishness also is there but we can't say that since the beginning of golden age man has been selfish no we have been having self interest we also wanted good things for ourselves that is but natural but not that in we want to exploit others for our own sake so benevolence beneficence to be doing something for good for others should be our outlook our attitude a yogi a raj rishi a brahma kumar a brahma kumari anyone who has love for god has love for the children of god also therefore if a person has love for the children of god 
what in practice will happen? They will think of the well-being of others also. So this should be our vritti, parokar vritti, parmarth vritti. Parmarth vritti is bit different from parokar vritti. Parmarth means not only laukic, not only mundane or worldly, but otherworldly, transcendental. That is different. But parokar vritti, upkar. Baba says you should do up, upkar even to apkari. Apkari par bhi upaka, upkar karo. You should be kind even to those people who are unkind to you, who have been unfair to you, who have been not nice to you. They tease you, they cause pinpricks to you, create problems for you, they defame you. Even such people also should receive benefit from you. You should have something to give to them. If nothing else, then at least kindness. Kindness costs nothing. They say you can kill a person with kindness. Have you heard about it? To kill a person with kindness, you see. Be so kind, so kind, so kind to a person that the other person is killed. What does it mean? He is ashamed. He feels that you have been so nice, so gracious, so I surrender. So this should happen. Even if you want somebody to agree to what you want, the best way is be kind to that person, gracious to that person. God is kind. Even when we talk to other people who are great, saintly people, we say, Aapki nazare inayat chahiye. We want your kind looks on us. Nazar se nihal kar dijiye. You see, you have your gracious looks on us. That is what we say. So kindness, they say, costs nothing. If you can't do anything, at least do this. They say a person went to a grocer, someone who used to sell small household things, necessary for our kitchen and so on. So he asked him to give him some sugar. He said, I want to eat something. I have a chapati, but I don't have something to eat chapati with. So can you give me some candy, some sugar? So he picked up his stick and said, go away from here. He showed him that he would hit him with the stick if he doesn't go, you see. That man who was poor, who had nothing to eat, you see, with his chapati, he said to this man, Arre bhai, gud nahi dete to mat do. Gud jaisa meetha to bolo. You see. If you can't give me sugar, it doesn't matter. You can say I don't want to give you. But at least you can speak as sweet as sugar. That doesn't cost anything, isn't it? So should be our attitude, our behavior, even to such people who are utterly selfish, more selfish people, who never cooperate with us, never help us, you may be helping them in their time of need, again and again. You stand by them in their times of adversity. When they feel lonely, when there is no one to take care of them, even then you go and show your sympathy. You have been so nice, but in your hour of need, they turn their face in the opposite direction, as if they don't know you. They are such people. Even to such people, you should be nice. That is what Parabkar Vritti is. And if someone has done any good to you in, in the whole of your life, even a little bit of good to you, some kind of kind act, never forget it. 
never forget it. Baba never forgets about it. Those children who have been in the yagya in the early days, who did some, gave some kanadana, made some little contribution, either by their, in the form of their money or physical labor or even goodwill, Baba always helps him. He never forgets him. He says, invite my such children also. He remembers them. If they come even today, after having left the institution for a number of years, he welcomes them, like good Samaritan, you know. So, Parokkar Vritti, it has no limits. How, mind, how broad your mind should be. This itself develops us. It is not that we are obliging somebody, that we are doing some favor to somebody. It is for our own benefit, for our own development, development of personality. That is one of the topics which nowadays people discuss very much in seminars and so on. Development of personality. This is essential, this aspect of personality. So gracious, never be unfair, impolite, discourteous. Always behave in a very nice, graceful way, you see. That kind of attitude. And another vritti is ekagra vritti. Ekagra vritti. The opposite of this is chanchal vritti. Some people are very sportive. Their mind is mind gets scattered. They are uncontrollable. Their mind does not stop at one thing. It jumps from one thing to another thing. They are not able to hold their mind on anything for some time, as they wish. The mind drags them to in whichever direction it wants. They can't peg the mind to some uh, somewhere and have a hold over it. So hold your mind. To hold the tongue is something perhaps more easy. And, uh, but holding the mind, what is meditation? What is yoga? Holding our mind. What you say, control of mind. What do you mean by that? That you have a focus and you concentrate your mind there. Therefore, some people talk of concentration of mind. They say silence is the greatest power. What happens in silence is that your mind is not jumping from branch to branch, but on the other hand, it holds on to something so that it is able to get at some result. Do some useful research. Think of a good idea. Invent something. Make some discovery. All the discoveries that have been made, which have made life comfortable and given us so many contrivances, machines, gadgets, and so on, it is because those people who did it they were able to control their mind, hold their mind on a particular topic. And many wrong things which have been done, if we read the history of mankind, we find many wrong decisions taken by political leaders, economic leaders, the wrong policies which they decided, the wrong direction which they gave to the people of their country their community or their political party, you see, was because their mind was disturbed. And their mind being depressed or de disturbed, they were not able to hold the mind on something. So holding the mind, achal, achal vritti. Ekagra vritti is also achal vritti. There are some sisters who when they came to this institution, their name was Chanchal, you see. 
there is a sister in Punjab. When she came to the institution, she was known by the name Chanchal. That is the name given to her by her parents, you see. Very naughty, not controllable. But Baba gave the name Achal to that person, Achal. So ever since Baba gave that name, really that person became Achal, you see. Maybe that earlier also the person was Achal, but the parents had given the wrong name, you know. Some people, parents, sometimes parents give the name Nan Sok. Nan Sok means that his eyes are of comfort to him. He has the good eyes and good eyesight. But the man may be blind, you see. The person may be blind from the very time of birth, but the parents have given the name Nan Sok, you see. The opposite of it. Now, Achal, which, which is opposite to Chanchal, the whole turmoil in the society, all the problems in the society are because of those people who are of Chanchal Vritti, disturbed people. They never stop at one thing. They always think of something naughty, you see wrong things, bad things. And yoga, as I said, is making the mind achal. You see? Stheriam, stherevritti, that your mind does not waver. You have a great determination. Whatever you think you are able to do, your willpower is strong. All these are interconnected with the chanchal or achal vritti. So, Achal Vritti is a great achievement. What does this Yuri Jala do? He is able to concentrate his mind. Concentrate, concentrate, concentrate. And a time comes when it is fully concentrated. And he says, stop. And it stops. You see. The clocks, the watches, even though they are in your purse, or at your home, the hands of the clock stop moving. How does it happen? Concentration is such a power. It can do mir miracles. So, like what do the laser rays do? The concentrated light, very powerful. The light can scatter away in the form of beams or rays. But if these rows, rays are concentrated into one, all of, most of them, then it forms a concentrated form. We very often give the example of a lens, and we say, just put a piece of paper be, below the lens, and concentrate the rays of the sun, and the piece of paper, after some time, begins to burn. You can see a flame, a smoke coming out. How does it happen? The light of the sun was already there, but you have been able to get it concentrated. There is a center, and there are circles and circles round about it. Concentric, sir, concentric circles. But you concentrate. You, instead of having those circles, around that center, you just have your whole energy on that particular center, that pinpoint. Baba therefore says, Bindu Lagao, Bindu. Three Bindus, three stops, he says. The soul is a point of light, God is a point of light, and you just apply your mind and do it, do concentration. So if you use drama also to stop your mind, then you are able to concentrate. No one has given these three formulas for concentration. There are people elsewhere teaching various kinds of meditation. What do they do? They say, imagine to your mind a lotus flower. Can you see the lotus flower? 
<coughs> the lotus flower is actually not there but you just draw a picture of the lotus flower in your mind because you have already seen it if not practically then in pictures and i asked somebody some boy little boy have you ever seen a lion he said yes i said from very close angle he said just near me i saw the lion i said where was it he said in the tv you see you see so i said that is possible that you could have done otherwise you are a person who is so much afraid even of rat and you say that you saw the lion just nearby you could not have survived you see if the lion was there within your few steps difference distance so they say just imagine to yourself the lotus flower just think of nothing else but the leaves of that lotus its color its tenderness its very mild fragrance so on and so forth this is how they teach concentration why should i concentrate my mind on lotus unnecessarily what will i gain why not go to the market and have a lotus yoga with the supreme and instead of having that kind of concentration then they say all right think of a candle flame there is a candle don't see the candle there is a flame you see only the flame not the candle and in the flame in the center do you see something a piece of thread which is burning don't see it see only the light okay i do it see that light nothing else don't think of anything so i feel very happy that today i was able to concentrate on a flame of candle's light for say 4 minutes 5 minutes what does it mean i myself am a flame shiv baba is a flame why not concentrate on it that will give me something bliss peace love it will give me a new experience so this achal vritti instead of chanchal vritti you see this kind of thing is possible only because baba has given us now if the god were i am omnipresent as they say god is omnipresent what do you mean by concentration in yoga what do you mean by concentration if god is omnipresent let the mind go anywhere it likes because god is everywhere let me think of delhi shakti nagar you see because god is there also why should i concentrate here on god on the picture be behind me you see or on shiv baba in param dham because god is everywhere so if god were everywhere how would you practice yoga the very concept of god you are giving is wrong that won't allow me to concentrate and if it doesn't allow me to concentrate how can i have yoga my mind will fritter away all its energy it will learn helter skelter this direction that direction it will not stop any at any particular place this is not yoga this is vyoga vyoga means separation you are deviating from god rather than concentrating on god so how you test a particular branch of knowledge a philosophy a theology any concept which is given to you in any institution you should also see its practical aspect if god were omnipresent okay even if as a theory it were correct practically it does not apply how does it help me i can't become a yogi if god is everywhere you see but baba told us god is a point of light so now if you concentrate your mind will be full of tremendous power because this is the minutest thing the infinitesimal thing 
there can be no smaller point than god you see it is invisible to the naked eye and it is invisible it is very difficult to understand it even by mind those whose mind is not pure they will not be able to see a point of light they will see in their mind something round you see but then they will think it is not point it is bigger than a point okay let me reduce make it smaller then i make smaller but god is not even this he is smaller than that so i again reduce it go on reducing it you see you can make it the minimum size the infinitesimal size only when your own mind is so subtle so clear your line is clear you don't have your physical consciousness of the body and physical relatives then your mind becomes so sharp its grasp becomes so sharp that you are able to see with your mind clearly the practical the actual supreme being you see therefore they say some of them it is incomprehensible it is abstract you see how should we think of it we can think of it because he is our father if we can think of ourselves by net of god that is our own real nature we also are points of light but that is possible only when we become pure of mind very very pure no malice no prejudice no bad quality in our us in ourselves the more we purify ourselves then only we become nearer to god we are able to have a link with him and to experiencing so this is very essential this is the climax of meditation if we want to have that karma ti avastha karma ti stage the most powerful stage bhava say you can't be in that karma ti stage for a long time because mind again gives up that state and goes this way that way that is possible by practice and by behad ka vairag without these two you can't have that ekagrata ekagravritti when you are not concerned with the whole wide world where will your mind go except on god so the way of concentrating your mind on god is that you have a behad ka vairag dispassion they call it disinterestedness i don't think it is disinterestedness because we are interested in the world we want to change it into golden age and we want world sovereignty so how do we say we are disinterested varag par perhaps to me is not disinterestedness it is dispassion we are not drawn by it not attracted to it that is our state of mind and this enables us to have what we say ekagravritti achal vritti the opposite of chanchal om shanti earlier i was talking of vrittis so i thought that instead of continuing that topic because it might have been boring for you jagdish bhai always starts with prithis you see so i thought i begin with something new what do you say should i first complete the prithis or you wish something new to be done prithis so i should finish but i also wanted to take about yoga because baba has very often been saying that the quality of our yoga should improve we are not in deep meditation whereas baba has been asking us 
to her intense and deep meditation. So how to have that kind of experience was another subject. But if you want me to continue with Vritti, okay. I have many papers with me. <laughs> many prescriptions, you can say. So I take that one which is mentioned about Vrittis. Already I have talked about many Vrittis and uh, there are some left. One of them is a Seva Vritti. Seva Vritti. The intention, the motive to serve. Suppose someone prepares food in the kitchen, whether it be in the kitchen at home or kitchen here, you see. Now there are many kinds of attitudes one can have. There are many alternatives. One is that we think that it is our duty we have to do. Because some work is assigned to everyone and this has been assigned to us. So we think that as a duty-bound person we have to do our work well. This is an attitude. Another attitude is, oh, for so many years I have been preparing food in kitchen. Is it the only work I will continue with? There should be some change. How long I will do this? There are others also, they don't do this and again and again, they ask me to do it. So I considered it as a burden. This is another attitude. The third is that I consider it as a seva, service. We are establishing golden age. And Baba says, Jaisa an Vaisa Man. As the food, so are our thoughts. So if I prepare the food while being in meditation, while remembering Shiv Baba, it will purify the thoughts or the mind of others. So if I consider it as a great service, which I will be doing, I can think that my day starts with good service. Before others have started their service, mine is the first, because unless and until they take the breakfast, they can't do anything else. First of all, they have to fill their belly, you see. Pale pet puja, fir kaam duja, you see. They say, first of all, we must eat something. Then only we can do other things. Empty stomach we cannot. So if I consider it as a valuable service, I am contributing my own little might to Baba's service. So that is one of the other attitudes. Now this kind of attitude, service, service, Baba says not only this kind of thing, but all whatever you do. Even when Baba would give toli to someone, look at someone, it should be service, not merely an action, looking at others. When you look at others, if your drishti is powerful and you are in meditation, so the other one will get detached from the body. So that is also a service. When you give something to someone, if you think that it is an act of service, not a single act of Baba was without service. You can see the senior Dadis, Dadi Janki for example. Whenever she meets somebody, whatever she says, it is for service. Every breath of life, 
every act of hers is devoted to service. So service, service, service. Baba says, I am board server. I am a servant of Politicians say we are servants, public servants. But you know what they mean actually. They want the whole public to serve them, actually. And they only say that they are public servants. But we are actually doing the real service, cleaning the whole world of evils. Let there not be a single evil left in the body, in the world. And then let golden age start. It is the greatest service that one can ever do. We are devoted to that kind of service. Service. When you play something, tennis for example, when you first throw the ball into the court of others, you say, let us do service. Service, the word service is used in many ways. When you send your vehicle to someone's garage, you say, my body has, my vehicle has gone for service, you see. But this kind of service, this is real service, the attitude of service, that we are world service. And unless and until we have the motive of service, we cannot have humility. Humility comes when you think we are your most obedient servant. During the British rule, everyone in India was the tradition. Even the highest officer of the British Raj, while signing a letter at the end, would write, you are most obedient servant. They didn't feel that they are doing something which is out of humiliation, that they are bending too low. No. We are your most obedient servant. And Baba says, a father is always the most obedient servant of his children. If you ask a person why he does work all the day long, all through the year, all through his life, he will say, Are bhai, baal bachche dar aadmi hoon. Bachcho ki seva karni hai. I have to work for my children, he says. I have to work for my children. He thinks he must have something as lay by in the banks so that when he is physically no more, they can have something from the banks. They depend upon something on the ancestral property. He wants to leave something to them. So all through his life he does work to earn, to make money. Why? He says for the children. So, so he leaves all, everything, the building he makes, the vehicles he has, all other things which he has gathered together for the sake of the children. So therefore it is justified to say that a father is the servant of the children, you see. And Baba, the highest one, the holiest one, Look, he also says, I am your most obedient servant. My beloved children, I am your most obedient servant. Why have come from such a far off distance to serve you, to take you out of the quagmire of these evils, this maya, this virl of maya in which you have been caught up very badly, because else you can't be liberated. In order to do this service, which I alone can do, I have done. This is kind of service. They say it's in history that Akbar, you know, a Mughal king, Akbar, he, there are many things between Akbar and Birbal, you know. Akbar said to Birbal, and Birbal said to Akbar, you see. These kinds of dialogues are recorded. Akbar had been uh, telling Birbal, Birbal, I want to become a Brahmin. Birbal, I want to become a Brahmin. How can I become a Brahmin? 
He said, my Lord, I'll let you know. Give me some time. He always wanted some time. He was a very clever fellow because if he immediately gave some rude reply and the king was shocked, he would be no more. He would lose his life. You see. So he wanted to think, to apply his mind what to say. So he said, give me some time. Okay, have your time. I am not in a hurry. How long you will take? Maybe after a week or so, you let me know. How I can become a Brahmin? Then what day he say, they say, you see, he got a model of the son of Akbar made. You see, looked like the son of Akbar. And uh, we, the king used to go for an evening walk by the side of river Jamna. And Birbal also went there for a walk. And with him was that model, uh, which looked exactly like the son of King Akbar. And then when he saw that King is coming, Akbar is coming, he threw the model in the river and that began to sink, you see, go down to the bottom of the river. The king thought that it was his prince, crown prince. So he ran very fastly and jumped into the river to save his son, you see. There was a retinue of servants with Akbar. He had many courtiers with him. He had many wealthy advisors with him, wise people with him, who were also going with him for a walk, because kings do not go alone on such occasions. So he didn't ask anyone to save his son. On the other hand, he jumped into the fray, into the river, to save the king. He did not care even for his own life, for whatever good dress he was wearing, he just jumped into the river. Now actually it was not his son, looked like son. It was an imitation son, not the real one, you see. So then when he took it out, he saw that it was a model, not the real one. So he just asked Birbal, why you did like that? You know I jumped into the river. You should have told me why you did like that. Why you did like that. And besides the question how I can become Brahmin, he used to say, you Hindus uh, have blind faith. You say God comes at the time of highest irreligiousness, God himself comes. Why should God come? God is almighty. He can be there wherever he is. From there he can command the angels to do whatever he wants to be done. Why should he personally come on earth? When he has so many competent people to carry out his orders, what need is there that he himself should come? This was also a question. So he said, my Lord, I, you had asked some question. And in order to answer your question, I had sought time. And now today I wanted to give you the answer. He said, to which question uh, and what answer? He said, you had been asking me, why does God incarnate? Paramatma ka avtaran kyun hota hai? Why does God himself come on earth when others could do for him whatever he wanted? Sir, you had a retinue of servants, military people, and policemen, and other people. You could have asked any one of them to jump into the river and to save your son. Why you yourself did it? Because you loved your son and you did not wait. Otherwise your son will get drowned. So because of that you jumped yourself, not minding even your own safety and without waiting to order anybody else. 
so also when this world is full of sorrow, of misery, and there is great irreligiousness, God does not ask Ibrahim, both Muhammad and ever the others, you know, to go and save the humankind. He himself comes, you see. He himself comes because we are his beloved children. He loves us so much. We are just up to here, you know. And when only very little part of our ourselves is left, if he did not come even at that time, we will be drowned. Lutia doob jayagi. Nothing will be left. So he has to come, you see. And therefore he comes, he rushes up. This is the answer I wanted to give you. He said, now I understand. God is compassionate. He has Raham. He is merciful. And he being merciful, in order to save his beloved children from further deterioration, degeneration, and downfall, he himself comes. For service, he himself comes. Therefore, Baba says it with justification that he is the most obedient servant of, of his beloved children. You see, Baba says, even, you see, you must have seen certain ch naughty children, very naughty children, just trying to get over the head of the father and uh, trying to play with the mustaches of the father. And the father does not feel very badly about it, does not become angry. On the other hand, he feels very happy that my child is, you see, doing something to my mustaches, you see. Child is child, and the parents are happy to see the child, even if they are doing some things which are churlish, not in good taste. So we do certain things which Baba has been forbidding us, asking us not to do. Still, he does not give up his attitude of service. Again and again, he says, day and night, I remember when we were with Baba, when he was in Sakar form, he won't be able to sleep the whole night. And in the morning when you meet him and say, Baba, have you taken proper rest? He will say, no. How can I rest? You children only rest, you see. Uh, Baba would say, I have problems to face. The whole world has to be changed. So this is the task before me. How can I sleep? The message has to reach every corner of the world, you see. And it has just trickled only. Only in few drops it has gone. Many children are yet deprived of Baba's message. So how the message should reach the farthest corner of the world to all the people so that not a single child is left whom this invitation has not gone, who has not come to know that Baba has come, his father whom he was invoking, he has come. So invitation should be delivered to all of them. And uh, uh, Shiv Baba showed many scenes in divine beings to Sandeshis, to those who went in trance, as to how some human beings were left ultimately in this world drama, whom the message had not reached. And Baba himself personally had to go to deliver that message. Not a single child should be left. So also we should have that kind of enthusiasm, earnestness, zeal in our life. We are messengers, we are crusaders. We have to give the message to everyone. Not a single one should be left. We have to do this service. So my serviceable children, Baba would say, it's a great qualification, serviceable children, seva dari bache. Nowadays we have so many seva daris in Madhuban and also seva daris everywhere, you see. Just as there are non dari Sikh and there are other dari dari, you see. Similarly also seva dari. But real seva dari, 
who have in their mind all the time this kind of thought how they should be devoted to service our every blot of drop drop of blood every bone should be for service we have to become the dichi rishi baba would say haddi seva what does haddi seva mean dadi jan ki also very often say haddi seva haddi seva haddi means bone what do you mean by haddi seva you should be so tired so fatigued and you should spend every drop of your blood for service so that only the bones are left you see and that bones also pain you are fatigued to such an extent you see that you are bones now only your muscles get tired you see maybe you feel a little bit headache at the most but your every bone should pain not pain in that sense in the medical sense but pain means you should do so much service so much service so much service let this body not go waste let it be utilized for the benefit of the whole mankind for the service you must have heard the story of the dichi rishi how the deities went to him and asked him to give his bones so that they can make weapons and can kill the devils and he offered yes you can have even my bones you see to give the bones is not an easy task even when a person has a small fracture you just ask him how much pain he feels you see this kind of service so this vritti this kind of an attitude of service it makes us surrender what do we mean by surrender surrender for what seva seva bin seva meva nahi this not this meva kishmish and badam you see that property the one you get in golden age that meva this meva can be had from any departmental store you can get it no problem then prafulla vritti prafulla vritti blossomed mind like a flower a flower a blossoming flower baba says you have to become a flower from a thorn a thorn causes pain to other but a flower gives fragrance good smell it is smiling it has very tender leaves it has very colorful looks you see it is beautiful to look at you get feel you feel refreshed when you see the flowers you are the flowers baba says my flowers the flowers of the garden of allah bhagwan ka bagicha you are the flower of those flowers so our mind should always be in full bloom blossoming fully we should not be having even a small trace of sadness sorrowfulness we are happy we are very happy some people say but but there is one thing which is lacking which we have not been able to attain that should not be there fully happy knowledge full peace full bliss full love full baba is full have everything similarly we should be blossoming fully the rose the bud of our mind should be blossoming fully very fragrant always giving good smell not doing disservice not talking ill of others not defaming others because it is stabbing one in the back if you just complain and talk ill of other people during their absence it is just like stabbing in their back you see it is also a kind of murder we commit and in bhakti mark they are very particular about it they say you should not talk of ill of others when they are not present you see even in parliament 
if you talk about anyone and that person does not belong to the house of commons or of lords, he is absent, he is not a member. So you speak about him, that defenseless man, he can't answer your charges. You allege so many things against him, but he has no one to protect him. You are doing something unparliamentary. It is wrong. It is not like civilized people, high class people, noble people. Similarly, if you want to say anything, say in his presence, you see. First of all, speak to the person. And if you want to speak to others also, speak it in their presence. So that if they want to say something in reply, let them have a chance. Even the court gives the chance to the criminal. If the criminal cannot reply the charges, let him have an advocate. And if he is poor enough, he can't pay for the advocate, the government pays on his behalf. The legal aid he can get. You can get a legal counsel from the government. The government will pay the taxpayer. But this is the natural justice. The natural justice is everyone must be given a chance to prove himself crimeless, that it is not his fault. He didn't do it. Otherwise, it is no justice. It is travesty of justice. Wrong things, you know. But very often we do certain things which are the opposite of it. So, blossoming means not having all these kinds of malices, malice, you know, prejudice, bias, having something in our vision which is a bad thing, you know, about others, looking at the potholes, looking at the negative side of certain things. Every person, even the ugliest, has a beauty. Look at that. And then only you can be happy, fully happy. You can't be fully happy unless and until you are happy with others, with whom you mix, whom you see, with whom you have to deal. If they do something which you feel hurt, hurts you, then how can you be happy, fully happy? Baba says, kapari khushi, kapari khushi. What is kapari khushi? There are many kinds of khushi, joy, happiness, kapari khushi, from here to here, you see. Like a thermometer at its breaking point, someone having 108 temperature, you see, so that the thermometer will break, the mercury will come out. So also, you see, our happiness should be of such extent. Kapari Hoshi. So this is what we should have, the vritti. When we have the positive attitude towards everyone, he is a beloved one of God. Let him progress. Let him go forward. I wish him well. You see. He, whatever he may be, it is up to him. I love him. You see. God bless him. He Prabhu iski buddhi ka bhi tala kholo. Open the luck, lock, lock of luck of this person, you see. Have good wishes for everyone. Then only we can have prapullit vritti, vritti, very important vritti, very, very happy. Thank you. Om Shanti.